The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmed will be the one ruler of the Romans. Now, the so-called resurrection of Christ was such a serious matter in the days of Paul. He went to trial for it. And the Pharisees had this twisted belief system. That's why they hung out with the Sadducees regarding the resurrection. They always believed in one dying for their sins. This is seen in Ezekiel 18 and 19. This is seen in Micah chapter 6 and verse 7. All of the children of Israel suffered from a false teaching. And that false teaching was the son should die for the father. And so he, speaking of Paul, believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ way too soon. Now he is on trial. And here we have King Agrippa, who is from the nation of Edom. King Agrippa was converted into Judaism. Now let's read in Acts chapter 26 and 24. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus. But speak for the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Now, this right here went over your head. You fail to realize that Edom is from Esau. It's another name for Esau. And metaphorically, Esau is Esau. So here you have Paul trying to push a religion on Esau, metaphorically. And he turns it down. You see, Jesus don't want to have anything to do with Christianity. That is seen in the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife was pushing all up on him, and he didn't want to have anything to do with her. Okay, And it's in the story of Esau when he was picking out wives. He purposely went to the daughter of Ishmael to piss his parents off, to piss his father the apostate Paul. Oh, so all throughout the Bible and the types and shadows, the prophet Isa doesn't want to have anything to do with the Christian church. And this Edomite ruler turns down Paul's Christianity. Now I have more. Let's go. So Paul was pushing Christianity on this Edomite ruler and he refused it. He turned it down. He didn't want to have anything to do with Christianity. Now, Paul was beside himself and much learning made him mad. Now, today we're going to tackle why Paul was in Arabia. Why was he calling the church saints? Why was he talking about a covenant with Ishmael? This is going to help you have a greater respect for Paul if you are Christian, because if you are Christian, he is your last and final messenger. But for us who are Muslim, we know that the prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. You see, this war is not in between the prophet Isa and Muhammad. You see, the prophet Isa, peace be upon him, is the Messiah in Islam. Peace be upon him. But this war is in between the house of Saul, which is Christianity, and the house of David, which is Islam. This war is practically in between the prophet Muhammad and Paul. Paul was greater than Christ.
Paul was a picture of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was greater than the prophet Isa. Even Jesus said this with his own mouth. He said, out of all men born of a woman, key words, born of a woman, there is none greater than John. John had his own ministry. John had his own followers. John wasn't following Jesus around. John had his own followers. This is a picture of the apostate Paul. Paul is the father of the Christian movement. Okay, it is to him. All the churches are worshiping. They have no idea what they are worshiping and who they are worshiping. They are worshiping Satan and his messenger, and that is Paul. So we have the house of David, and that is Islam. So we have this war in between these last and two final messengers. Okay, so Paul was in Arabia. Paul was calling his church saints. Why was he doing this? Let's go to Deuteronomy 33 and 2 so you can see for yourself. Deuteronomy 33 and 2. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran. Now, Paul was educated. He knew that when the Lord came from Sinai, that was speaking of Moses. When he rose up from Seir, he knew that was speaking of the prophet Isa. OK, because Judah is right next to Seir and Seir comes from Edom or Esau, which is metaphorically Esau. And then he shined forth from Mount Paran. Now, Paran is modern day Mecca. Paul thought he was this guy. Paul thought he was the last and final messenger. That's why he called his church saints. Watch this. And he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. So in Paul's mind, he was the last and final messenger. He was the father. He was the last powerful, most powerful prophet. He recognized Jesus as the son because he believed in son sacrifice, as all of the nation of Israel did. Even the prophet Isa got carried away in this. Even also John the Baptist got carried away in this. All of the leaders, Caiaphas, they all believed in this sacrifice for their sins. And Peter had to pull the prophet Isa to the side and tell him that he was not going to suffer these things. And Peter was so correct. OK, now you're going to see that Paul thought he was the last and final messenger. So he's in Arabia. And then let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. Now, Abraham had eight sons, but he's speaking of two important sons. He's speaking of Isaac and he's speaking of Ishmael. And he's going into a metaphor because he's really talking about him and the prophet Esau. Because in Isaac, you get Esau. Now watch this. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. Now this is speaking of Ishmael. But Paul is calling himself Ishmael. Paul is saying that he was Ishmael persecuting Isaac. Watch this. But the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gender of two bondage, which is Hagar. So in Paul's little mind, he was saying that the law of Moses practically was the law of bondage. Going on, for this Hagar is in Mount Sinai. In Arabia and answers to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou, barren, that brayest not, break forth and cry, that thou travailest not. For the desolate have many more children than that which have 
an husband. So that is in Isaiah 54. I know a lot of you do not understand that. That's all in Isaiah. God is talking about the nation of Israel. And God is talking about the nation of Ishmael. And he is saying that the nation of Ishmael is going to be greater than the nation of Israel. He's speaking of Hagar and he's speaking of Sarah. And Paul is attempting to break down this metaphor, but he is wrong. Now watch this. Now we brethren as Isaac was are of the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bond woman and her son, for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bond woman, but of the free. So Paul is saying, while he lived as a Pharisee, he was saying that him being under the law of Moses, he was practically in bondage. But now, since he's in Christ, he is of the free woman, okay? And his breakdown is incorrect. So Paul is basically saying, look, I have been the Ishmael under the law of Moses, persecuting Jesus, which is born of the free woman. So Paul was basically saying, these two sons are two covenants. And he's basically saying that the covenant of Ishmael is the law of Moses. And he's basically saying now the covenant of Isaac is the covenant of Christ. Now that's the only reason why he is bringing up Ishmael and Isaac. Because he's basically saying that he's been the Ishmael. Okay? Persecuting Isaac. And now he is the Deuteronomy 18 and 18 prophet. That now he is the Deuteronomy 33 and 2 prophet. He's practically saying that when God said that he would make of Ishmael a great nation, he thinks he's that guy. Although that guy would come from the nation of Ishmael, from the loins of Ishmael. And that could only be the prophet Muhammad. So Paul was practically saying, look, I am the Ishmael that's been persecuting Isaac, okay? That's why I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. And then he's calling his church saints. Why? Because open your Bible. The first time in the Bible saints is mentioned, it is right here in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. So Paul is practically saying, look, I know about Christ, but look, I am the final messenger. You see, the children of Israel always knew that there was going to be somebody else that came after Christ. And Paul believed that he was that guy. If you go to John 1, they asked John the Baptist, are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you Christ? He said, no. They asked him, are you that prophet? Okay, that is not all speaking of Jesus. It is speaking of three different individuals. And the last would be the most powerful. Okay, and that's why Paul called himself the father. In other words, he knew that he was greater than the prophet Isa. He looked at the prophet Isa as the son or the sacrifice of the church. And he looked at himself as the last and final lawgiver as the father of this church. But see, in the Quran, God puts Paul in a trick bag because Paul doesn't know that the prophet Muhammad was not a father. In the Quran, Muhammad is told, peace be upon him, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is not the father of any of his men, okay? But Paul took it upon himself to be that father. And that's why in the nation of Islam, in the Hadiths, we have a prison in hell named Paul. It is Bulas in the Arabic tongue. Now this story is seen in Luke 16 when Jesus gave us this parable. So the Christians don't even have any reverence for Paul. They fail to realize 
that Paul believed that he was the Deuteronomy 18 and 18 prophet. He believed that he was the last and final lawgiver. That's why he gave you 13 letters, okay? That's why he gave you laws that was contrary to the laws of Moses. He did away with circumcision. He did away with things unclean. He told us we can eat food sacrificed to idols. He told us we can have only one wife. He did away with the multiple wives. Paul thought he was the last and final lawgiver. But this is the thing. You see, Paul did not show up in Mecca in 629 CE with 10,000 Muslims or 10,000 saints or converts. No, that wasn't him. You see, Paul tried to be the prophet Muhammad. That's why he cursed Islam in Galatians 1 and 8. He was trying his best to steal the mantle that belonged to the prophet Muhammad. And he was not successful. He tried his best to curse Islam. Now, go all the way back to the first King Saul. Remember what made him mad? The women were singing. Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Okay, why that made him mad? A lot of Christians don't know. But why did that make him mad? That made him mad because he could prophetically see through his divination that that was speaking of a Gentile messenger showing up in Mecca, 629 CE, with 10,000 Muslims. Now, I teach right here in the house of David that the prophet Muhammad is seen in the life of David. In other words, David is a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. And King Saul was a type and shadow of the second King Saul in the New Testament. So Saul wanted to be the last and final messenger. Now he says this in your own scriptures. If you would just go to 1 Corinthians 15, it reads in verse 8, and last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. So Paul is saying, look, I'm the last person that's seen Christ. I am the last Gentile messenger. Remember, Paul calls himself an apostle to the Gentiles. Now, an apostle is a messenger. Paul constantly magnified his office. He believed that he was the messenger that was spoken of in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. He thought he was that guy and he was wrong. He was rushing. True. He was not from the nation of Ishmael, number one. Okay. Number two, he was moving way too fast. And he put a false sacrifice upon the prophet Esau. The prophet Esau was taken up alive. And that's why Paul had a lot of issues with the people in his church, specifically the church in Galatia, because the church in Galatia did not believe Jesus was crucified. That's why in Galatians chapter three, Paul is acting a fool and he's ridiculing people in his church that did not believe Jesus Christ was crucified. So there was a number of things that was wrong with the apostate Paul. He wanted to be the last and final messenger. The problem with us is that we're not in the word. Paul was at least in the word enough to know that there was a messenger that was going to come after the prophet Isa. Even Jesus talked about this comforter that would come after him. He talked about another comforter. In other words, he was a comforter as all the other messengers. They were comforters, okay? Comforters are people. Read your Bible. Comforter is a person. And Jesus spoke of another person that would come after him. And Paul tried his best to be that guy, okay? But he wasn't. That messenger or that comforter that will come out of Arabia from the nation of Ishmael and will be the chief amongst the ten thousands will be the prophet Muhammad. So there you have it in a nutshell. A lot of you Christians fail to recognize how great your apostate Paul was. Paul seen in the scriptures that there was coming a person that would be after the prophet Isa. That's why Jesus was the son of the Christian church and Paul was the father of the Christian church. 
All those scriptures where Jesus was talking about my father, my father, my father, my father. If you notice, if you look up that word father and, it, and you look at the word God in Greek, it just, it just means any deity. OK, God never once said that he had a son. OK, that voice from heaven, that's not God almighty. OK, you've been deceived. OK, God Allah has no sons. God has no sons. And in the New Testament, that is speaking of any deity, okay? And that father was a metaphor. It was going into Paul. Paul was the father of the Christian church. Jesus was the son of the Christian church. There was a man in the Old Testament by the name of Jeroboam, okay? His name start with a J. This man created the two golden calves, okay? Now, that's exactly what happened in Christianity, Paul, which is the wannabe Jesus, okay, the wannabe messenger, he was the one that created this two golden calf religion we call Christianity, okay? So Paul was in Arabia, okay, in Galatians 1 and 8, okay, let's read that. Galatians 1 and 8, and we'll go to Galatians 1 and 17. Let's do 1 and 17 first. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. OK, God told us in the book of Genesis that he will make the nation of Ishmael a great nation. And Paul was the wannabe Ishmael. OK, why? Because he persecuted the church and in his little mind, he figured that he was the Ishmael that was persecuting the prophet Isa. But he was wrong. OK, he was wrong. So he was in Arabia and then he was calling his church saints and he was talking about a covenant with Ishmael. You want to know why? Because he believed that he was the Deuteronomy 33 and 2 prophet. And we know that Satan was leading him. If we go to Galatians 1 and 8, look how he curses Islam. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we preached unto you, let him be a curse. Now, it don't take rocket science for a person who's smart to understand that the prophet Muhammad's revelation came from an angel in Arabia. OK, so Paul right there. Using his witchcraft, using his divination, tried his best to curse Islam. This is the reason why Joseph, who was a picture of Christ, planted that cup and Benjamin sat with the corn. And that corn is going into the Quran. Paul tried his best to curse the Quran. He tried his best to curse Islam. OK, he was like King Saul with that evil eye. When the women were singing, David has slain his ten thousands, okay? When he took David in the house, and then he tried to pin him to the wall, okay? With that javelin, and he was unsuccessful. Paul tried his best with his false prophecy, with his divination, with his sorcery, okay? Mr. Bar Jesus, he tried his best to curse the nation of Islam, but he was not successful. You see, Paul has a prison in hell named after him he is the beast of revelations he is the wolf in sheep clothing okay that is in hell the book of revelation tells you okay he's in hell and in the hades it tells you there's a prison in hell named after paul okay that is the fate of paul paul stole the prophet isa who was destined to be the Messiah of the Muslims. He stole him from that religion and tried to put him in Christianity. This is exactly what happened to Joseph. Joseph was stolen from the land of the Hebrews. Then he ended up being in Egypt and becoming the Messiah of another nation. Okay. Everything you see in the life of Joseph, you see in the life of Christ. Everything you see in the life of King Saul, you can see in the life of the second King Saul, okay? So there you have it. You have to study. You can't just go by what people say, okay? The white man is not the best with the Bible, okay? These Israelite camps is not the best with the Bible, okay? You have to have an ear to hear, and you have to been studied up in the Bible because a lot of the stuff I'm bringing out 
It is advanced and it's for people who know the Bible. OK, most of this stuff, if you don't study, if you haven't read the Bible from cover to cover a few times, the Apocrypha, if you haven't read the Quran, a lot of the stuff I'm saying, I'm like speaking Spanish to you. But if you study the Bible, OK, you will get this. That's why I always tell you to pass this channel to someone who know the Bible. Don't be a hater. Find someone who can shut me up or just shut up, okay? So right here, you just learned today that Paul thought he was the last and final messenger. You see Christians in your Bible in Deuteronomy 33 and 2, it talks about a messenger that will come after Christ. Jesus spoke of a messenger that will come after him. He said it is better for you that I go away because if I don't go away, he will not come unto you. He wasn't talking about some ghost. He wasn't talking about some spook. He was talking about a real person. And the only person who is the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, is the prophet Muhammad. Why? Because every word he spoke was by the revelation of God. This man told us who was unlearned. He told us that neither was Jesus killed or crucified. Allah took him. That is the complete truth. And if you follow what he said and match it up with the types and shadows and the Solomon concept and you look at the life of Joseph, his murder was false. OK, it was a false murder. Joseph was alive. OK, and he wasn't the number one man in charge. OK, he was the governor. OK, he was the right hand man of Pharaoh, of Mr. Pharaoh, Mr. Paul. OK, Jesus is the right hand man, according to the Bible of Paul. OK, until the prophet Isa breaks that yoke and Allah will charge him to destroy that Christian church, just like he told Joshua. He said, unless you destroy the accursed from among you, I will not be with you no more. Okay, that is the truth. You see, the prophet Muhammad, peace of blessings be upon him. He was like Moses. Think about Moses. He started off a son of Pharaoh, but then he broke away from Pharaoh and created his own religion. Now, that's exactly what the prophet Muhammad did. When he was on the scene, Christianity was already there, okay? But he refused that religion, and he started his own religion, which is coming out to be the most powerful. Right now, Islam is the number one fastest growing religion, okay? Everything you see in the life of Moses, you see in the life of the prophet Muhammad. Remember, Moses really couldn't talk. He really couldn't talk, okay? Okay? He was unlearned, just like the prophet Mohammed. OK, peace and blessings be upon them both. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.